Hear the rigors of rural living. Who knows what surprises are in store for us? There's cornball comedy and down on the farm fun on Green Acres. You've got to take the bull by the corn. For farm life pitfalls. And farmhand miscalls. Yeah, what are you doing? Freezing apart in my hair. You're in for a hot time. That might be fun. On Green Acres. Don't miss the fun on Green Acres. Weekday afternoons of fun on Texas 39. This is Edwin Newman for A Point in Time. Brought to you by De Beers. I was born three billion years ago of fire and light. Released from the earth, I am unlike any other. I have survived desert winds. Drifted down ancient rivers. Who am I? The eternal gift of love between man and woman. I am a diamond. I am forever. In the latter decades of his career, films such as the Macintosh Man did not always bring the kind of critical acclaim for John Huston as had most of the films he directed as a younger man in the 1940s. Through five decades, the independent-minded Houston simply filmed stories that interested him, from action-oriented thrillers and detective gems such as the Maltese Falcon to big-budget busts such as Moby Dick and the Bible. Houston was above all an adventurer, as exemplified by his The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. The story of two gold prospectors in Mexico co-starred his father, Walter Houston, who won a Best Supporting Actor Oscar, at the same time that John won Oscars for Best Director and Best Screenplay. How many times have I told you to bark and warn me when a guest comes in? <laughs> Yes, sir? Uh, I'd like to get a room, please. Oh, yes, sir. You can register here. That'll be room five. Oh, I'll have someone help you with your luggage. Uncle Joe? That won't be necessary. It's my kind of a guess. <laughs> Welcome to the Shady Red. I'm Joe Carson. Glad to meet you, Mr. Carson. My name is Thompson. I'm the GM. That's general manager of the Shady Red. <laughs> well... Good. A uh, very nice place you have here. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll show you to your room. Oh, that won't be necessary. New guest? Mm hmm Mr. Thompson. Guess where he's from. I'll not only guess where he's from, I'll tell you where he's from and I'll tell you what he does. Okay, Joe, tell us. He's a pecan grower from downstate. Well, how do you know that? I have a fifth sense for people that way. I can spot them like that. Am I right, Bobby Joe? Wrong. All right? And he's got to be a roller towel salesman from Cedar Falls. <laughs> Wrong. Now, hold it, Joe. You said that he's a pecan grower or a roller towel salesman? Yeah, either that or a glass blower. <laughs> Wrong. Okay, then what is he? All it says is N.E. Thompson, Marysville. And in parenthesis, H period, C period. Hotcake salesman. <laughs> oh, no. H.C., you say? Hair curlers. <laughs> Joe! Oh, hi, Doc. Bobby Joe. Joe, big things are happening in the valley. What, Sam? Big things. What? Wow, we... <laughs> Sam! Joe, did a fella by the name of Thompson register here at the Shady Rest? Yeah, just a little while ago. Well, it all ties in then. Big things are happening. Real big. What big things? I don't know. <laughs> Joe, do you know what this fella Thompson does? No. You don't know what he does? No, I do not know what he does. You really don't know? He didn't put it down on the register? No. So tell us. Well, I don't know. <laughs> You're a regular walking encyclopedia. <laughs> Look, if he turns out to be a pecan grower, or a roller towel salesman, or even a glass blower, do let me know. <laughs> Go on. 
What do you know about this, Thompson? Why is something big going to happen? I'm coming to that. Horse collars. H.C. <laughs> he sells horse collars. <laughs> arrived, I happened to be looking out of the window. And when his car pulled up, I spotted this seal. He owns a car now. No, not that kind of seal. It was on the door, an official thing. Hey, couldn't make it out. Something about the county. Oh, of course he's down here getting votes. He's a politician. Oh, brother. What's the matter? A guy that keeps his mouth shut and won't say anything? A politician? <laughs> Hi, Joe. Seth? Hi, Steve. My glad you're here. Oh, thanks. Betty Joe? Hi, darling. Lunch in a minute. Oh, hi, Sam. Hi. Listen, Steve. A guy checked in here. Very suspicious. Wouldn't say what he was up to. Well, what's his name? Thompson. Yeah, but that won't mean anything to you. Norbert E. Thompson? Yeah, he's a stranger around these parts of... How'd you know? Well, he told me. He's here for the Highway Commission. The Highway Commission? That makes sense. H.C., Highway Commission. Hey, you know what's the funny thing? That was going to be my next guest right after Hot Carrier. <laughs> what's he doing here? Well, they're planning a new county road that'll cut across the valley. A new road? How do you know that, Steve? Well, because he hired me to fly him over the valley so we could pick out the best route. Boy, this is big. When are they going to build it? Well, the planning stage should be completed in the next couple of months. Actual construction within the year. How come he told you all this? I asked him. <laughs> Why didn't we think of that, Joe? <laughs> uh, Steve, thanks a lot. This was a great big story for the garden. Thanks. Why didn't we think of that? <laughs> No, there's still something fishy. What do you mean? How come he clammed up on me and Sam will tell you the same thing? The guy went out of his way to keep a closed mouth. You really want to know? Yeah. Well, when the county's planning a new road, they don't go blabbing it all over the place. Why not? Well, because of the land speculators, the promoters, the fast buck guys. It'd be quite an advantage to a person to be the first to know where a new road was being put in. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. If a guy or a group of guys could tie up that land adjacent to the proposed road, they could stand to make themselves quite a bundle. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, I think your head needs a lube job. <laughs> well, I can hear the wheels turn. <laughs> This is a business phone. Well, business is what we came here to discuss. Important business. Sarah, hold the call. Joe! <laughs> now, folks, out of the goodness of my heart, I've called you down here to let you in on how to make a lot of money. How's that, Joe? Well, you've heard about the new highway that's coming through. Now, all you have to do is sign right here, authorizing me to make your deal for you. Why should we do that, Joe? Because in unity, there is strength. One for all, and all for me. Er, one for all. Uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, I think we're beginning to catch on. You want to sign everybody up so no matter where the road goes, you make a commission. Well, um, Am I right? You're close. How about on the nose? Well, you, you could put it that way. Well, in that case, I got a question. Me too. All right, what's your question, Sam? Why do we need you? Passing quickly to Ben's question, what's your question, Ben? <laughs> Mine's the same as Sam's. Oh, and since we've dispensed with that already. <laughs> Wait a minute, Joe. I think we've all made up our minds. Now, why don't you take a vote and find out what they think? 
I'll vote last, so I won't be prejudicial to your case. Say, thanks for the vote of confidence, Sam. Oh, for... <laughs> How about all the rest of you? Ben? Forget it. <laughs> well, well, maybe I didn't explain it enough. <laughs> Say, my dear, how about me coming over to your place and explaining it in person? <laughs> oh, sir. Well, I guess that just leaves you and me, Sam. <laughs> okay. Those who go along with me are going to make a pot full of money. <laughs> oh, hi, Joe. How'd it go? Oh, I had a little trouble with a couple of those hard heads. Newt Kiley and Ben Miller, a couple like that. What seems to be the trouble? Oh, they want to handle their own deals. Keep all the profit for themselves. <laughs> How selfish can you get? <laughs> I signed up a few, though. You know, those Yahoo's could find themselves out in the cold. Where's Thompson? It's up in his room. Who'd you get, Joe? Oh. You got Homer Ward, Tom Cox, Hal Webb, Ben Groover. Scotty McGraw. Homer Ward, Tom Cox, Hal Webb, Ben Gro They don't live anywhere near each other. <laughs> Come in. Just about got your highway lined up for you. Oh, really? Well, I figure you being a stranger and me having lived around these parts all my life, it was only my civic duty to figure out the best route for you to follow. Oh, that's very interesting. Now, here's where she goes. We'll go through the Homer Ward place, up past Tom Cox's, and down to the Shady Rest. <laughs> Hal Webb. <laughs> Down by Ben Gruber's. <laughs> and over by Steve and Betty Jones. <laughs> then on to the Scotty Matross place. And, uh, well, after that, you're on your own. <laughs> you're, uh, sure that's the uh, best way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How about, uh, I think we will. You mean your mind's already made up? Yeah, pretty much. Well, if you want to go that way. <laughs> hey, this goes right through Steve and Betty Joe's place. Yes, that's right. Well, say, are you in luck? No, I'll just handle that little deal for you. Oh, well, thanks very much. But don't worry about a thing. Just leave everything up to yours truly. <laughs> I got news for you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, don't go anywhere. <laughs> hey, what would you say if I unloaded your cottage for you? Unloaded the cottage? Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, as a matter of fact... It... Yeah, of course you would. Now, you've had it on the market for six months. No takers, right? Right, but... Uh... Well, are you kids in luck? Well, you see this Thompson guy... Been relying on me for advice. <laughs> I don't want to seem to brag, but I think you can count on the new highway cutting right across your property. <laughs> no kidding. That overwhelms you, don't it? <laughs> well, when you got a guy in your corner who knows all about politics and all the angles, you can expect breaks like this. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, Joe. I guess you're right. We are in luck. No, no, no. I mean, we owe you a debt of gratitude. You should see Kathy Joe. She's helping Bobby Joe make a pie. Hi, Uncle Jeff. Hi. I was just telling Steve some news. Oh? Did you tell him our news? Betty Joe. The new highway is going right through our property. <laughs> well, don't you think that's good news? You already knew it, huh? I'm sorry, Joe. Put my foot in it, huh? Yeah. We both did. Up to here. 
Joe. Joe, listen. Huh? Maybe you can handle this deal for us. I, well, you know, we don't have much experience in this sort of thing, and, well, they, they say they'll offer us a fair price, but, well, they might take advantage of us. Yeah, you're right. Now, boy, I gotta hand it to you for being level-headed enough to seek your advice from someone that's older and wiser. <laughs> sure, they try to knock you kids down. They don't know who they're tackling when they face Joe Carson. Right. We'll fight. We'll fight him in the court. We'll fight him in the bank. Joe. We'll fight him in the air. Joe. On the sea. Take it easy. In the trench. Joe. In our home. Joe. On the street. Oh. You don't want to fight? <laughs> Go get him, Churchill. <laughs> Actually, you know, your uncle doesn't have to go into the city with me. I mean, the state will name a price that's fair and equitable, and that'll be it. Well, we know. But... Hey, here I am. <laughs> I was just saying, Mr. Carson, the state will pay a fair price. There's no need for you to go in and dig her. Wouldn't you like that? Don't worry, they say you can't fight City Hall. But I'll handle this just the way I took care of that bum jaywalking rap down in Riverdale, remember? <laughs> Come on, let's go. Goodbye. Bye. What was that about the bum rap in Riverdale? Bobby Joe got a ticket for jaywalking, and Uncle Joe handled the case. And? The judge gave her five days of fifteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, it sure is nice of you to take time off to help us. Well, no sense leaving your things here for the vandals. Vandals? Well, sure. Once the word gets out that the state has taken over the place, they'll be swarming all over it. I don't like that. Well, what difference does it make to us? Come on. Oh, uh, uh, might as well take this down, right? Yep. Yeah. What's that? Oh, that's the uh, condemnation notice. What? The condemnation notice. You see, whenever the state is going to condemn a building, they put up a notice. What's wrong? Well, I don't like the idea of our cottage being condemned. Well, honey, it's not going to be our cottage anymore. Honey, don't say that. This will always be our cottage. Oh. What's the matter? They've condemned our cottage. Well, sure, that's the first step in a procedure. What procedure? Before they demolish it. Demolish! Sure. What they do, see, they come in with this crane and this big steel ball and pow, pow, pow. The whole thing is down in seconds flat. Oh, no. Steve. Did you have to put it like that? Put it like what? That's what they do. They come in with this big steel ball and pow, pow. <laughs> to become grown up about these things. Be mature. That a girl. You know, sweetheart, when you get right down to it, all we're talking about is a bunch of lumber and some nails. <laughs> She'll be going through a rather difficult period. Over what? Well, you've heard about the new road that's going in. Yes. Well, in order to put that road in, they're going to have to tear down our cottage. Tear down your cottage? Yeah, that's what they're going to have to do. 
They're going to tear down your honeymoon cottage? Bobby Joe, they have to tear it down. But that's the most beautiful cottage in the whole world. I agree. But that's more than a cottage. Like, it's a gingerbread house in fantasy land. Okay, it's a... But it's more than a gingerbread house. It's a shrine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Here's a symbol of love and, and togetherness and everything that's good. Bobby Joe. They can't tear it down. They just can. Bobby Joe. No, they can't. No. We won't let them. No, we won't let them. We won't let them. Don, thank goodness. Well, what's going on around here anyway? Well, it's not fun time at the Shady Rest. Would you talk to her? That's all about our cottage. Oh? Yeah, they're going to have to tear it down. What? They're going to tear down that beautiful little house? <laughs> this is all I need. That's horrible. That's absolutely horrible. Doc, I can't. Oh, well, then they can't do it. That's all. They just can't do it. <laughs> There's no way to get out of it. Oh, that precious little cottage. <laughs> sooner or later anyway. I booted the whole deal in the city. It's all off. You mean the sale of the cottage? That's right. Oh, I was so big. I gave him an ultimatum. Pay me my price or you'll have to move your highway. And they moved the highway? Oh, Joe, that's wonderful. Oh, 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 oh. going through the cottage? Uncle Joe, you're wonderful. You're terrific. I am. I mean, yeah. Well, I don't know how you did it, but you sure saved the day. Well, who would have thought this little nut would get upset over tearing down a cottage? It's not just a cottage. It's a shrine. <laughs> well, none of us wanted to see it torn down. I guess that includes me, too. Well, that's the way I had it figured all along. You know, they tried to force us into going through with it, deal. I said, I'll fight it. I'll fight it in the courts. I'll fight it in the streets. I'll fight it in the field. Winston, I'll fight it up down the countryside. Uh, Joe, the icebox is open. Oh. Well, well, what have we here? Leg of chicken, pumpkin pie, and tapioca pudding. <laughs> Thank you. 